in this next step here, after we've set up the flexibility model, we want to go calculate a lot of displacements. In the first instance, let's get the displacements that are associated with the primary load. Here's our structure, its displaced shape, and then the moment diagram that results uh, out of that. We'll end up with a negative moment here at the left end, at the fixed end of negative PL over 2. Of course, we really want to divide by EI here to get the curvature diagram, but we'll handle that here in uh, just a second. Now, in most of these cases, if you either have already memorized what the relationships are or you have beam tables where these things show up in, then certainly go and take a look there. But in case that you don't uh, having to memorize that or you don't have beam tables around with you, what might you do? There's uh, no less than eight different ways we could calculate the, the deflections, but moment area turns out to be uh, oftentimes very convenient and simple and easy to use. We draw this deflected shape. We have the tangent to the deflected shape at A, which is at the fixed end, which follows right along with the undis undeformed or undisplaced position of the beam, and that's exceptionally convenient since then the tangential deviations and the relative angle changes uh, that we can calculate using the moment area method will be directly displacements. For a reason that you'll see here in just a little bit, I'm going to actually start with the rotation um, as opposed to the uh, numerically the degrees of freedom and the directions that we've set up. Delta 2O is the rotation at the end of the beam, and that's going to be equal to the area under the M over EI diagram. Rather than writing M over EI every single time in all the various terms, let's just take the EI over to the other side to make the work a little bit easier. <clears throat> Again, even though it looks like a delta, this is physically this is the rotation that's happening out here at the tip, and that's just the area under the M over EI diagram to give us the change. That's a triangle, so we've got one half of minus PL over two times then L over two and that would be minus then PL squared over 8 EI for that displacement. For the translation, that's the tangential deviation. That's the first moment of the area under the M over EI diagram taken about the point of interest, which is out here at B. So that's located here, L over 2 to get from B to the midpoint, and then we got the 1 third, 2 thirds business net of 5 6 L for that. So we're going to take this moment of the area which we already found is PL squared over oops I said I wasn't going to include the EI and then I go and I do it so the whole point was not to have to write 1 over EI all, all the time so PL squared over 8 times 5 6 L and we get minus 5 times PL cubed over 48 Right, so now we, so now we got two displacements. We have four more to go. Next setup then is for putting the one unit load in the degree of freedom one, which is the shear or the translational direction. And conveniently here, uh, just happenstance, the whole approach is going to end up being the same, um, same kind of shapes and everything else. Um, we know this one actually pretty well here, that a cantilever with constant EI and a load out at the tip is going to end up having a PL cubed over uh, three EI kind of business going on here. But check it out here. We've got a area that is one half of the height L times the uh, base, which is also L times then the moment arm of two thirds L, and of course uh, in reality divided by EI. But we factor that over, and so now the twos go away and you get then L cubed over 3. And I just re recognize up here I put P equal to 1. I'm making all kinds of silly uh, little... Oh no! <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting way ahead of myself. That's the actual value of P. It's not equal to 1 here. The, the load is 1. So we get L cubed over 3, just like we'd anticipate for that one. And then the angle is just the area of that, so that's one half of L times L with the EI taken over here. So now we've got L squared over 2, both positive, right? 
according to our convention that we set up for the direction of these positive displacements. And finally, we have the same kind of thing down here. Um, now we put a unit moment on, still the same overall process, that F12 is a tangential deviation of the M over EI area um, in its first moment. So that's just going to be 1 times L. And then we've got the moment arm of L over 2, and we get L squared over 2 positive. And note that that's the same as F21 by Maxwell Beatty law of reciprocal displacements. Those should be uh, that way. And then for F22, that's just the area, so that's 1 times L for that one. So that gives us all the flexibility coefficients, gives us the uh, displacement associated with the load, and we are now ready to write compatibility equations in the next step.